Now let's move upstate a little bit. Over, over on the east side of town is Geauga Lake. And that's kind of been a park in transition. It has. Uh, we acquired Geauga Lake in 2003. Um, historically, when we acquire a property, it takes between three and five years to, to bring it around to our standards and get the attendance levels up. Um, quite frankly, it's behind, it's behind the curve, what we'd hoped for it to do. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that, I think. Um, the economy's played some part of it. Uh, I think that um, uh, when we removed the animals uh, from the uh, Six Flags Park, uh, that had an impact that, that we really didn't count on. Uh, it's an awful big uh, structure. We have over 700 acres there, and we're just not getting the attendance to support uh, 700 acres. So we're taking a very, very hard look at it. Uh, we put a lot of money into it. We put $30 million into a, a water park, and we think we have you know, a premium water park, probably the best water park in, uh, uh, in northeast Ohio there. So we're very proud of that. Uh, we're going to continue to, uh, to develop. Uh, more, more of the development is going to go on the south side of the park, the water park, or, or what we call the old SeaWorld side of the park. And, right. and uh, we'll let the coaster lovers uh, maybe go to Cedar Point a little bit. I was just going to say, so st strategically, is it is the um, is the plan to make it more of a water park with a few amusement rides uh, supplement? It, it was not when we acquired the property, but again, the attendance levels didn't maintain what we wanted to, and so of course, you know, you have to go economically what's what's best. Right. And uh, we find more and more people are enjoying the water park, and we had the ten coasters at that park at one time. Um, and uh, so, yes, we are going to have to start, uh, you know, phasing out uh, some of the, the bigger coasters. As we mentioned, economically, we just can't put, afford to put in a 15 or $20 million coaster in that park when, when you're only doing about 700000 in attendance. Right. So an opening weekend um, at Cedar Point, um, let's say you get a beautiful weekend like we just had with 75-degree uh, weather. You know, what... what um, what kind of tone does that set for the whole season? You know, it's uh, it, it really is a uh, it is a great business to be in. I'm very fortunate. I love my my uh, my house is uh, is right in the parking lot of Cedar Point. So on opening day, we always have the Ohio State band there. They get there early, and I wake up in the morning and um, and and they're playing Carmen, Ohio, practicing in the parking lot. And if it's a beautiful sunny uh, Saturday morning, and you know the energy is so high because everyone's worked so hard all winter to get the park ready. And uh, we've got, you know, especially when you have a new attraction like the Maverick coming this year, it, it's, a, it's a real high. It's, a, uh, you know, it, it's like opening day for baseball or football. It, it's, it's, it's certainly something that uh, if they work for the Browns or the Indians, why, they can relate to the same experience. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you really don't classify it as work. It's really just, it's, it's a very, very enjoyable, enjoyable way of making a living. You know, with the new parks, you're, I know you're offering a, a new package this year that's essentially a, a season pass to all of the parks. Do you have sales goals in mind for that? I mean, is there a target? Uh, yes, we, yeah, we, we, we do put, uh, we put goals up there. We really didn't know how it was going to, uh, to go this year. We have a combination where you can get all three of the Ohio parks. We have pri five properties in California. We have another package which you can get all five California properties at another, uh, at another price. Then we have a deal where you can get all the parks at one price. Um, our strategy was a little bit different than, uh, than uh, the Paramount Park strategy is, uh, we put a lot of integrity into our pricing. Uh, we don't give away a lot of free tickets with our season's passes. Uh, we feel that we put a lot of money into our parks. Uh, they're clean and safe, and uh, we want people to come to them. And so what we do is uh, we don't really have the... Uh, 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 the, the freebies that uh, that the previous owners of the park gave out. So it, it's going to be an experiment this year to see uh, just how the the seasons pass. But it's a tremendous buy when you can get you know 12 properties for under 100 dollars at the right time of the year. Are, are you seeing any early success with that? Uh, we are, um, especially uh, around Sandusky, uh, the Cedar Point parks, and and the uh, the existing Paramount parks are down a little bit in seasons pass sales again because uh, maybe some of the um, uh, the benefits that they had before are sort of being phased out a little bit. Uh, and again, they're a little more expensive than they were last year. The, Cedar, the, the original legacy parks are, are about the same as last year, but we had to raise the, uh, the Paramount Park season's passes a little bit. So we're seeing a little bit of resistance there. Mm -hmm. But hopefully what we've done at the parks is we've lowered the front gate price. Uh, we've introduced a senior citizen's price. We've introduced a child's price, uh, things that they've never introduced before. So we're sort of maybe we can uh, uh, trade off a little bit in the, uh, uh, in the buying uh, scheme that uh, our, pay our customers are going to... Uh, they have this year. To some degree in the in the amusement park business, you're you're competing with other amusement parks. But you're also competing with other forms of entertainment to get my family of four mm -hmm. to spend my money at your at your park. Who who are your main 
competitors? Well, we really compete uh, for the discretionary dollar. Um, we compete with uh, with movie theaters, the Indians. Uh, in the fall, we compete with the Browns. Uh, but it's it. Uh, our surveys tell us lately that uh, our biggest competitor right now is electronics. Uh, we have to uh, to get the teenagers uh, off of the couch, away from. Uh, uh, from their computers and their sports boxes and get them out and actually participate in activities as opposed to just doing it uh, on the internet. Mm -hmm. So we have our commercials geared toward that. We're trying to get out and we're actually, you know, like all companies, we're, we're advertising on the internet and, and uh, so we're, we're going that, that channel to try to get, try to get the kids out of the house and more active and be out and actually uh, participate as opposed to just doing it, uh, on their, on their, um, uh, Computers. I guess I never imagined Xbox and Wii as your as your competition. Yes, that, uh, it's very competitive for us. Uh, we it's a challenge for us to get to get the uh, teenagers out of the house and uh, have them come out and participate. Now I know you had been hinting that you were thinking about retirement prior to the purchase of of the Paramount Parks, and since then you've signed a, a contract extension that I believe takes you through. 2012? Yes, January of 2012, through the 11th season, yes. Why, why, why did you feel that was necessary? Well, um, I was, this actually was going to be my last season and had every intention of doing that. But about a year ago, of course, when the Paramount Parks came about, why uh, that was a goal of mine always to, uh, to be part of those and to have those, uh, those parks under the Cedar Fair umbrella. And it has to be a two-way street. I wanted to do it, uh, and, and, but I had to have the board you know, want me to do it all. So you have to be wanted to do something. And so the board said that uh, they wanted me to stay and see that through the uh, transition, and I definitely wanted to uh, to stay and, and see it through the transition. So uh, they extended my contract, and um, I'll be here until after the uh, the old uh, 11 season now. But uh, right after um, uh, right after we uh, extended my contract, why I told the board, I promised them three things. Number one, that uh, I would work just as hard uh, the next five years, if not harder, uh, than I've worked the last 35 years. Uh, I will not lobby to um, to renew my contract at the end of uh, its termination, and that I'll have a successor in place uh, to recommend to the board to see that uh, the company goes forward. Well, we wish you a very successful 2007. and and moving forward at least through 2012. Thanks, Paul. You've been listening to, to Dick Kenzel, uh, the, the Chief Executive Officer of Cedar Fair. Um, look forward to this Sunday's Plain Dealer, where you'll find a more extensive interview with Mr. Kenzel, uh, and we'll cover these subjects as well as many others.